What are some other areas where you think that there's going to be innovation over the next five, 10 years where the government is playing a role right now to spur that innovation? Yeah. Can you give us one or two ideas of where you think there's going to be significant changes? Absolutely. The, you know, the power electronics one is kind of a, a sleeper, right? So that's mm -hmm. one that I think maybe most in the audience uh, haven't been thinking about, but it, it's a game changer for a number of reasons. Um, but like including the internet router for the grid, dramatically more efficient industrial motors where we use 69% of industry electricity, et cetera. Uh, but an obvious one, but where, where I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty in the, in the public sphere is batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries. So I, I really know this area well. And the basic way to think about it is that $300 per kilowatt hour of, of cost, uh, things start to get interesting at a hundred Batteries are everywhere, mm -hmm. both on the grid and in vehicles. And right now we're right around 300. Um, and so people wonder, is it gonna come down anymore? The answer is yes. So through economies of scale, that's gonna come down rapidly. But even more- And you're investing right now in, in to, to move that along, to, to lower the cost? Yeah, uh, we actually have the, the best research group in the world on lithium ion batteries is at Argonne National Labs, right, just outside Chicago. Chicago. Sure. Been investing in the best and the brightest for since uh, the 90s there. Mm -hmm. And they have actually invented a material that is twice as good, basically the same atoms as the batteries today, so the same cost, but it's twice as, twice as much energy per unit mass. So um, that's one thing I think is a real game changer is the technologies exist and they need to be kind of tweaked that can double the energy density of these batteries. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, the same amount of material, same amount of cost, twice as much energy, that's a huge lever on cost reduction. Uh, and another, another oh, yeah. area is in the stationary area. So you know, for example, uh, zinc air batteries. Some of you may know a company called Fluidic Energy, which was one of uh, ARPA-E's early investments. Uh, that company has developed a product that's on the market. They're deploying thousands of units in Africa and in Indonesia and elsewhere. And so I think we're starting to crack the code on grid storage as Where's well. that manufactured? Um, Interestingly, they've, they manufacture the highest value, highest IP parts in the United States, mm -hmm. but then they do a lot of the assembly in the, in the nation. So that sort of fits the model because the high IP is manufacturing is going on in the United States, even though it's selling to other parts of the, uh, other parts of the world and, and other manufacturing. Okay. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, observation to me is that the other countries' inability to respect IP gives us a competitive advantage. So the, you know, the rule of law in the United States and respect for IP uh, actually gives us an advantage in the United States.